Okay, welcome all to the Town of Williston Development Review Board for Tuesday, November 24th, 2020. Uh, first order of business is the uh, remote public meeting notice to open the meeting. I, Pete Kelly, as chair of the Williston Development Review Board, find that this public body is authorized to meet electronically without a physical location due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott in Act 92 as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. In accordance with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, I confirm that one, public access is available by video conference and telephone through Zoom. All members of the board and the public can communicate in real time during this meeting through Zoom. Planning staff will provide Zoom instructions for public participation before the hearings are opened. Two, the publicly noticed agenda, including Zoom web address and phone number. Agendas, material, and Zoom instructions are also provided on the town website, www.town.williston.vt.us. Click on public records and documents, then agendas and minutes. Three, the public can alert us of a problem during the meeting. If anyone has a problem with access during the meeting, please use the raised hand feature or chat box in Zoom or call Emily at 802-878-6704 extension three and leave a message. Four, continuing the meeting if necessary. If Zoom, cra if Zoom crashes or the public is unable to uh, access this meeting, it will be continued to December 8th, 2020. Uh, all votes taken at this meeting that are not unanimous will be done by roll call vote in accordance with the law. Uh, let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance of DRB members participating in this meeting. Uh, first up, Paul Christensen. Present. John Hemmelgarn. Here. Steve Lambrecht. Here. Scott Riley. Here. David Saladino. Here. David Turner. Here. Thank you. Uh, before we start the formal agenda, I will uh, hand the reins over to Emily. If you can walk us through some uh, pointers on, on how to use Zoom, that would be appreciated. All right, there we go. Uh, please keep yourself um, on mute when you're not talking. If you're calling in on a telephone, that's the star six to mute and unmute and star nine to raise your hand. Uh, if you would like to provide public comment, you'll have an opportunity to do so. You can press the star nine button or use the chat box. The chat box um, is on the toolbar and the raise hand button is on the participant section of the toolbar. Um, uh, tonight, we're going to do a lot of screen sharing where we'll be sharing the staff reports. There'll be a side by side view of the document and everybody's video feed. You'll see a green toolbar. You can click view options and toggle between the two to, for your preferred view. Um, if you have a bad internet connection, you can turn off your video. You can close other internet tabs um, or phone apps to help. There's also a little arrow next to your microphone symbol where you can merge your telephone as your speaker and microphone. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Emily. Uh, first order of business on tonight's agenda is a public forum. Uh, it's an opportunity for members of the public uh, to uh, raise any issues or have a forum for a public uh, discussion on topics that are not on the agenda. Uh, so with that, I'll open it up to, uh, to the audience. Uh, is there anyone who would like to participate in a public forum, again, of items that are not on the agenda for tonight? Any raised hands, Emily? 
No raised hands, no chat. Okay. Uh, okay, so we'll go into the public hearing portion of tonight's meeting. There are four items on the agenda. Uh, HP 21-01 is the Williston Federated Church, uh, an administrative permit for a fire escape and windows. Uh, there's also DP 21-06 Adams Real Property LLC requesting a discretionary permit for a change of use. DP 21-07 Whitney Fellows, uh, care of Trudell Consulting Engineers uh, requesting a discretionary permit for a boundary line adjustment. And the last item is DP 09-01.20, uh, the Snyder FC Commercial Properties LLC and Riley Properties LLC <laughs> looking to amend a master sign plan. Uh, so first order of business is HP 21-01, the Williston Federated Church. Uh, who has that one from staff? That is me. Uh, so this is a request for a certificate of appropriateness um, to construct a fire escape and add windows on the eastern end of the fellowship hall. Uh, the applicant is also adding finished space inside for a daycare. This is a permit activity that does not require um, discretionary view, only the exterior changes. Here's a street view from Williston Road. Um, this is the fellowship hall of the Federated Church. And the facade we're talking about tonight is hidden from public view. It's behind the historic yellow house. Um, staff is recommending approval as proposed. Uh, this fellowship hall was built about 25 years ago. It's not historic. Um, no signs are proposed. The escape will be offset from the building about 12 to 16 inches. So when you look at the um, elevations that are included, it looks like it's right up against the building, but the side view here, um, it's, it's offset from the building. Um, it's gonna be a wooden fire escape. The railings and posts I think will be painted white. Um, the stair tread will be stained or put with um, an anti-slip surface. Um, it'll probably be painted in a year. Um, pressure treated wood needs some time to cure. Uh, staff is recommending approval. The only recommendations the hack made were to paint the posts and railings white um, and showing the um, stairs going in the same direction. The stairs will be headed from uh, the second floor to the parking lot to the north. Okay, is that it, Emily? Yep, yep. Okay, I neglected to uh, ask the applicant who was present uh, representing the applicant, and if you would identify yourself uh, and provide your address for the record, please, that would be appreciated. I think Mr. Mr. Lamb is with us. Yes, I'm Tony Lamb. I'm the chair of the Board of Trustees, which is responsible for the building. My home address is 24 BB Lane in Williston. The church's address is 44 North Williston Road. Thank you. Are you uh, are you the sole representative of, for the applicant tonight, Tony? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you have anything to add or any comments to add to Emily's report? No, I, I, I think she summarized it very well. It's a pretty straightforward project. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would agree. Uh, DRB members, uh, are there any DRB members that have any comments or questions for the applicant? Uh, the only question I have is the roof material for the, the uh, uh, walkway. It will be shingled. Shingles, okay. And the shingles will match the, uh, roughly match the shingles on the existing building. I think they're light gray. Okay. I have one question. Question is, the, does wood 
qualify for fire uh, escapes in Vermont? That's the only question. Well, this is, uh, my understanding is that it does. The uh, engineer who designed it uh, would, uh, my assumption is he's, but it's also, this also goes to the uh, fire marshal for his approval. So. Okay. That's all I need to know. Just want to make sure that we're not approving something that it's going to get hammered. <laughs> no. Well, well, so, so as a point of clarification, this body does not assess the project for code. Uh, that is, that is a, a, a separate, separate bodies uh, that, that do that. The fire marshal in this particular case would be involved. Uh, and so we, we don't have any purview on that. Any other questions? None for me, Scott, or um, sorry, Pete. Uh, no, no worries. Okay, so you're good. <laughs> everybody else, everybody else, this one? All set. Okay, uh, well, this is a good one to start out with. We're on, we're on pace for a Thanksgiving record. Uh, I'm gonna close HP 21-01 at 712. Uh, Tony, thank you for coming. Okay, uh, next up is DP 21-06, Adams Real Property. Uh, is, uh, who, who is here from uh, representing the applicant? Uh, Jason Adams is here from Adams Properties. Hey, Jason. How are uh, you? Your address, please. 207 Boyer Circle, Williston. Thank you. Do you want to say your name? And my name's Lloyd Squires, uh, 362 Penny Lane in Shelburne. Uh, anyone else representing no. the applicant? No. No, just you two. Okay, thank you. Uh, who uh, who has this one from staff? I've got this one as well. Okay, Emily, take it away, please. All right, this is a request for a discretionary permit to establish an accessory eating place and outdoor seating area at 31 Adams Drive. The primary use will be wholesale food manufacturing. The property is currently developed with three buildings, parking and related appurtenances. Seven to 31 Adams Drive is a multi-tenant building facing Williston Road. This property is located in the industrial zoning district uh, the current use is industrial. It has a curb cut onto Route 2, a state highway. Um, it is in the design review district. However, given the very uh, minor nature of this project, it did not go to the hack for review. Tonight, we're recommending that you take testimony and close the hearing, deliberate, and make a decision. We are recommending approval with findings of fact, and conclusions, and conditions as written. The DRB should review and discuss end of trip facilities. Project history, this is the first time the DRB is re re reviewing this request. Uh, there have been a couple minor changes made to the property since it was developed in the um, 1980s, 1985. Uh, police or public works and fire commented, police did not. The fire department memo is included as a condition of approval. They address things about lock boxes, sprinkler, connection and mailbox markings. No comment letters from the public were received at mail out, nor have I received any to date. Um, this property is located in the industrial zoning district. There are a couple uses proposed that are all allowed. The primary uses are food manufacturing and catering. Um, the eating place is accessory to those other uses and we'll get to that below. There are a couple other uses on the property, automotive repair, paint store, and roofing supply. Those are also allowed in this district. No new buildings or parking areas are proposed. There is an outdoor seating area that will comply with setbacks. Outdoor sales and storage are allowed in this district, um, but only where approved on a site plan. Um, if the applicant would like outdoor storage for this use, it must be located to the side or rear of the building. Um, accessory and temporary uses and structures. So 
Um, in the industrial zoning district, food and beverage sales and eating places are only allowed when accessory to manufacturing. And they're only allowed with a limit on the floor area. Um, in this case, 30% of the overall floor area. So 4,800 square feet is the total tenancy, which yields um, about 1,400 square feet of space. Their actual seating area is a, and food area is a little smaller at 1,150 square feet. And then the maximum allowable size for the seating area is 500 square feet. So they comply here and we're proposing a standard condition of approval. No changes to access are proposed. This property is served by a single curb cut onto Route 2. Um, it's also shared with the neighboring driveway or the neighboring property. Um, Off-street parking and loading. No new spaces are proposed. Uh, the building has 82 existing parking spaces. The applicant did a really good job of including um, a parking table and basically did our homework for the vehicle parking spaces and bicycle parking spaces, which do comply. Um, our calculation, um, 62 would be required today, but um, 82 is existing on this multi-tenant commercial site where industrial uses, the number of parking spaces needed may vary. Based on the number of bicycle parking spaces needed, however, um, there would be the requirement for an end of trip facility, which is a shower and a changing area for staff. The floor plan is showing an eight by eight ADA bathroom and it does not include a shower. Um, the DRB does have the authority to correct non-conformities Therefore, um, staff finds that requesting a shower and a tenant fit, fit up is a reasonably purport, proportional um, correction of nonconformity non and a condition of approval requiring an end of trip facility is included below. A design review, uh, properties of frontage um, on Williston Road in the zoning district are subject to design review. The only changes that are being made are adding mechanical ventilation and exhaust on the east side of the building, a wood-fired oven chimney going out through the roof and the outdoor seating area. As you can see in this photo, the existing landscaping, the trees um, break up the view of that east facade um, and the outdoor seating area will not be serving alcohol. So there's not gonna be any fencing, um, DLC fencing um, that would be subject to design review. As you can see in the highlights in yellow, only minor uh, mechanical is being added to the side of the building. Landscaping, no changes are proposed and none are required for this type of project. Similar, similarly with street trees, um, the front yard does have landscaping um, and we're not recommending that it be um, enhanced at this time given the scale and intensity of what's being proposed, which is essentially a change of use uh, special flood hazard areas. There are some on the site associated with the Muddy Brook. However, they're not applicable because there's um, a slope that drops off to the brook. Similarly with Watershed Health, um, there is a 150 foot buffer on the property to the Muddy Brook. There's some minor amounts of impervious surface existing um, from the original development within that buffer, but no further expansions or encroachment into the buffer are proposed. Outdoor lighting, no changes are proposed and there is a threshold in the bylaw where a couple, eight luminaries um, can be approved administratively. No changes to the master sign plan are proposed. This property does have a fairly recently updated master sign plan. Um, school and impact fees do not apply. Um, transportation impact fees are assessed by the zoning administrator at um, administrative permit time. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Emily. Um, Jason, I'm going to turn it over to you to to make comments, and I would uh, to anything that em you would like to add to what Emily just provided uh, in the staff report. And in your comments, please, I would like you to specifically address a proposed condition of approval number eight. Um, and uh, in, in the as it relates to uh, end of trip facility um, 
and what your thoughts are on that. So with that, I will turn it over to you, please. Is like Jason? The screen might be frozen. Oh, okay. Rebooting. He just dropped off. Oh, did he? We've got uh, still have visibility of him. Yeah, I lost him on my. Uh, I lost him on my feed. No, oh, he's still he's... on mine. Oh, is he? He's off of mine. Okay, he's probably okay. rebooting then. I'll just. Uh... Okay. Does anybody have a anybody have a cell phone number for them? Um, we should. Um, Matt, can you find a cell phone? I'm. Um, oh, I heard somebody just drop off. Yeah, he he just dropped off on my screen, so he'll probably log back in. Just uh, be a little patient here. There we go. Ah. Uh, All right. Can you guys hear us? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, did you hear anything I said? No. no. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to start again. So I. I basically. No, it's, you know, it's probably my fault. Um, I work by myself, so believe it or not, this is my first uh, Zoom meeting. Um, so my only other comments were uh, that the just to note that the uh, because the building is so far set back from. Williston Road, and there is kind of a parapet wall there that the uh, wood fired chimney uh, will not be visible from Williston Road at the road level. Um, and if there are any further questions with kind of the operation, uh, I have Lloyd here so he can help answer those. Okay, Jason, could you please address uh, proposed condition of approval number eight? We're, we've proposed in our draft condition of approval that you add an end of trip facility. Uh, do you have any uh, pushback on that condition? Uh, no, I, I'm not sure how much it'll get used. Um, I guess my, my only question would be, could the shower and changing room be located not within a bathroom? Could there be a separate little room just with a shower and an area to change? I see, I see Matt and Emily nodding. So uh, the answer to that, and John Hemelgaard is nodding, our resident architect. So the answer to that is yes. Okay. So I'm, I'm fine with the request. I, I don't know if it'll be within that uh, eight by eight bathroom or it might be located um, in that general area. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the interior location, it can be um, wherever it makes sense, so long as it's like a shower and changing area for employees to use. Okay. But it, and let me, let me just add that it, it, in a build, in a multi-tenant building like this, it, it, it could be in, it could, it could be someplace else in the building too, correct? That is correct. That way, that way it could be available for other people, other people in the building, Jason, so that if you came back in the future, um, you wouldn't have to add another changing end of trip facility. Okay. Yeah, we, we don't have any common space in this building, so okay. um, I, guess, I guess I'll probably just start. Well, hopefully there's not a lot of turnover there, so I won't be start picking away at it. But um, as things right. over, I'll just keep adding showers, I guess. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you all. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to the board for any uh, questions or comments. Uh, 
Uh, I'm curious, the, uh, the outdoor din dining area, what are you thinking for surface treatment for that area? Like, did you have any thoughts on that? Keeping it grass, maybe it's like a paver. Maybe pavers. I think something like pavers, um, we would probably do. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm and and nothing, no landscaping or fence around it. So just just kind of the flat pavers there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Again, we're not serving alcohol, so I don't think I think the regulations and requirements are not very strict as far mm -hmm. as I know. Mhm. Mm just thinking from a customer's perspective, they may want some kind of screening between the parking lot and the and the dining, but um, that's more business decision, not really DRB decision. But okay. So uh, Dave Turner here. I have just one question. Um, you're going to be doing wholesale or retail, or both? Uh, both. Okay. So the I, the primary right. business is is wholesale. Um, Bagels, which is why the space is so large relative to, like, I'm, I'm thinking the average bagel place. Mm -hmm. um, and um, Lloyd's previous business, he did uh, wholesale bagels, so he's pretty familiar with that with that market. Okay. I, I have a 900 clientele for mail order customers all over the country, and I just uh, got into an agreement with a bagel club out of Florida that I'll be making their bagels and shipping it to all their bagel uh, club customers by every month. They'll be regular. Um, they give their credit card and we supply the bagels for the company in Florida, which is headquarters out of Montreal. So they think they're getting a Montreal bagel from Montreal. But they're getting a Montreal bagel from Vermont. <laughs> Vermont would be better anyways. <laughs> well, <laughs> I've been I've been here now for since '96. I've made about 40 million bagels in my life by hand, oh, and geez. hopefully we'll make another couple million this year and a couple more million next year than this year. I guess uh, you can mail order anything. <laughs> oh, it's it's I mean, the guy the guy that has that bagel club company has a cheese club fac, uh, cheese club uh, company a shoe company where you get shoes from Portugal or something and he brings them here and he sells them by, you just give your credit card. You say, I want a new pair every four weeks or five weeks and they send them to you automatically. That's the idea with the bagel club. Once you sign up, you, you say what your regularity wants to be like um, every three weeks you want two dozen bagels and we automatically make them and send them out. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? The seating outside, do you guys have a preference um, in tables or picnic tables or round tables? Uh, is there a preference for you guys like or? I think that's I think that's in the furnishings category. I think that's a business decision. Okay. All right. From from a, a DRB standpoint, no. If you ask each of us personally, we might have an opinion for you, but it probably cost you a couple of bagels. Well, I'll take some I'll take some opinions all the time. Yeah, I know. I'm not. I'll make I'm everybody not. happy. <laughs> no, I just don't. I don't think that's part of our our purview here. Yeah. Yeah. There we're gonna. Pass on that. I think that's a personal preference to John's point. Uh, to circle back on this, the screening, which was kind of said, it's not really a DRB decision, but if down the road there's been feedback that people want to see that, is it something that we would go back to the DRB for? And if so, can you give us any, um, if you have any preferences or any, uh, what you've done in the past with other places so we can be prepared for that? Uh, Emily, can you feel that, Emily or Matt? Yeah, I think a little screening landscaping around the seating area wouldn't be a requirement of our bylaw. Um, so that could be done without even without a permit. Um, if next summer you guys want to throw some things in, uh, go for it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other questions from the DRB or the applicant? 
world's at. I'm good. Okay. Everybody good? All set. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, so we're going to close DP 21 06 at 731. Uh, thank you for, uh, for coming. Thank you all. Nice night. All right. Next up, DP 21 07. Whitney Fellows uh, and uh, represented by Trudell Consulting Engineers, a discretionary permit for a boundary line adjustment uh, with a, for a parcel off from North Wollaston Road. Uh, who is present from the uh, applicant? Hi, Abby. Uh, if you could state your name and your uh, the business. Yep, um, I'm Abby Derry from Trudell Consulting Engineers. We're at 478 Blair Park Road in Williston. Thank you. And um, this is Whitney Fellows from 146 North Williston Road. Hi, good evening. Uh, okay, who's got this one from staff? Uh, I'll be taking this one, Pete. Okay, Go thank you, Matt. Share my screen and, and take you through the staff report. Um, Bonnie or Emily, could you give me screen sharing ability? All right. You are a co-host, Matt, so you should be good to go, I think. Yep, got it, thank you. Okay. So this is an application for a boundary line adjustment in the residential zoning district. Um, many boundary line adjustments in Williston are approvable administratively, but when enough land is passing from one parcel to another, such that that land area is subdividable, our bylaw requires boundary line adjustments to be reviewed by the DRB. Um, the nature of a boundary line adjustment is that you are beginning and ending with the same number of lots um, and the same number of potential dwelling units. So this is a one-stop discretionary permit. Um, no growth management is required. Um, no pre-application is required. The subject property um, is 146 North Williston Road. Uh, accessed off of Lafave Lane, and the proposal will uh, move the acreage under my cursor over here, um, establish this new boundary line across here, and provide this rear area of the lot uh, with access to Lafave Lane. The proposed purpose here is for the construction of a single family home accessed from Lafave Lane and connected to town water and sewer in that area. I'm gonna head on down to the procedure tonight. Our recommended action for you tonight is that you take testimony and close the hearing, deliberate this evening and make a decision. The staff's recommended decision for this boundary line adjustment is for approval. Um, we did receive, oh, sorry, this is the first time the DRB is reviewing this proposed boundary line adjustment. Um, we did receive comment from um, Public Works and Fire. Um, the fire department commented to note their driveway signage and addressing requirements uh, so they could find the house. And Public Works did request a pre-construction meeting related to stormwater and the establishment of appropriate erosion control measures before construction begins and also noted the requirement at the time of permitting for the payment of water and sewer connection fees. We did not receive any public comment letters at the time of the mail out on November 19th and staff correct me if I'm wrong I don't believe we've received any comment about this proposal since then. So the lot that's being created by this boundary line adjustment, actually both lots comply um, with the standards for frontage, safe access and required land area for the zoning districts. 1.9 acres of land is being transferred from one parcel to the other. 
So the existing house at 146 North Williston Road, the lot that that house stands on will decrease in size from three acres down to 1.1 acres, retaining that existing home and driveway. Um, and lot two will increase in size to 4.3 acres and have a new driveway access off from Lafave Lane. Uh, you will note on the plat, there's a driveway turnaround um, and a shed on the existing lot and the shed I believe is proposed to be relocated to meet town setbacks on that lot when the property line is shifted. So staff has prepared recommended fines and fact conditions of law and conditions of approval for the DRB's review. Um, we are recommending approval with conditions at this time and I will stop there and I will stop sharing my screen. Okay, thank you, Matt. Uh, okay, first order of business for Abby and Whitney. Um, on the proposed conditions of approval, uh, do you have any concerns with any of the proposed conditions? I don't. No? No. Okay. Um, what uh, what do you what do you have to uh, add to augment Matt's uh, staff report? Um, I personally don't have anything to add. Um, kind of defer to Abby's um, uh, expertise up to this point, so I don't know if she has anything to to add to what Matt said. I really don't. I mean, it's a boundary line adjustment, um, shifting some of the weight from one of the lots to, to a different lot um, for the purpose of a single family home development. Um, you know, all of the conditions um, look acceptable. We'll, we are in the process of applying for a wetland impact permit um, to put the driveway in. And um, that will be secured prior to submitting for administrative permit. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any members of the public uh, present on today's uh, call that would like to speak on this application? Seeing no chats and no raised hands. Okay. Uh, thank you, Emily. Uh, DRB members, any questions? No questions. No questions yeah. here either. No question for me either. Okay. Uh, last, uh, last call for questions. From the DRB members? None here. Okay. Okay. Uh, hearing done, the DRB is going to close DP 21 07 uh, at 7 39. Uh, thank you, Abby and Whitney, for coming. Thanks you. for your time. Happy Thanksgiving. You too. Okay, next up, uh, DP09-01.20, uh, this is for the Snyder FC Commercial Properties LLC and Riley Properties LLC for a master sign plan amendment. Uh, Mr. Riley, are you rec recusing yourself from this one? Yes, sir. I am recusing myself from the hearing. I do have a financial interest in the project. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, who is representing the applicant at tonight's hearing? I am Chris Snyder and Andy Rowe is here and Joe Weave is also available. Hi, Joe. Hey, nice Hi, to Joe. See you. Uh, okay, uh, Chris, if you could give your uh, address for the record, please. Yep, Chris Snyder, Snyder Homes, uh, or Snyder FC Commercial Properties at 4076 Shelburne Road, Suite 6, Shelburne. Thank you. Uh, Andy, if you would do the same, please. Andy Rowe, Lamar Owen Dickinson, 14 Morris Drive, Essex. Joe? 
Uh, Joe Wythe, Whitenburg Real Estate Advisors, 40 College Street, Burlington. Okay, welcome all. Who has this one from staff? I'll be taking this one, Pete. Um, I will go ahead and share my screen and get started. Uh, this is an application for discretionary permit to amend an existing master sign plan as part of the Finney Crossing commercial development. Um, and the request for the amendments is to accommodate signage on the new building J uh, containing healthy living. Um, at the time that healthy living occupied the building, uh, the tenant had installed some window signage that was not covered by the July 2020 approved master sign plan um, for the project, some of that sign uh, has signage has an area um, beyond the normal size and window coverage limits in Chapter 25 of the bylaw and could only be approved through uh, an amendment to or a new master sign plan. Uh, as zoning administrator, I did issue a temporary certificate of compliance for the building, um, allowing them to move forward with occupancy. Uh, but, but pending resolution of the permitting of the additional signage. So uh, the, the zoning administrator position on this is that uh, either the additional signage needs to be permitted through an amended master sign plan um, for the temporary certificate to be replaced by a permanent one or, or it would have to come down or, or some modification be made. So tonight, um, what we're recommending is that the DRB take testimony and close the hearing, deliberate. Um, and I've just picked other in the decision category for tonight um, because I, I think it's worth the DRB doing a little bit of deliberating um, and, and sort of exploring this both in their open and deliberative sessions in terms of the applicability of the vision language in the Williston Comprehensive Plan and in the zoning bylaw as it relates to larger and more numerous signs um, that can be permitted under a master sign plan, i.e. the special findings we always talk about, and I'll go into that. Um, Finney Crossing has a long approval history and Finney Crossing Commercial, including Building J, has a history uh, going back to um, 2017. Um, the amendment to the master sign plan for the signage at Building J was just approved this summer. We did receive comment memos, uh, or sorry, a comment memo from the fire department, um, only to note that they had no comment. Um, we did not receive comment from Public Works, it being master sign plan. And at the time of our mail out, we had not received any public comment on this application. So the first part of a master sign plan is making sure that site-wide on Finney Crossing, um, the total of all of the signage on the sites, this includes the bank building, the hotel building, as well as building J, does not exceed the 8% maximum um, possible signage for the site. And that's 8% of one street facing frontage of each building on the site. So in order to accommodate these additional signs, the applicant is proposing some changes to the existing master sign plan, removing approvals for some of the previously approved signs to make room within that 8% cap for the additional window signage at Healthy Living. Um, so there's some banners on light poles that were proposed for the hotel that go away. And there's a proposal that the sandwich boards, uh, five sandwich boards go away at building J. So um, what, the, what I really would like to talk to the DRB about is um, what that town plan language says and really I think focusing on the very large um, Apple logo sign that faces Route 2 um, and ask the DRB, you know, are, are you willing to make findings that um, that sign is in compliance with the language I've quoted in italics here in the staff report um, as it relates to the language in the town plan. Um, that's really what it's all about. If you can make those findings, you can approve these signs. Um, if, if you can't, you might need to um, think about what you, what you could approve. 
So that's that's where we're at. Um, and as I said in the procedural notes, that's that's on, the only reason I suggest other in terms of, of whether I'm recommending approval or not. It really just hinges on being able to make this determination about the compliance of those signs with the language in the town plan and in the bylaw. And I have included in the findings a table of all of the crossing commercial signs. And I just want to bring that up to show the proposed removals and sort of trades that would accommodate the existing area. So this is a list of all of the approved signs, the maximum approved sides, sizes um, in the far right hand column here. And I'm noting here the removal of the sandwich boards um, and the decrease in the light pole signs in the hotel parking lot that would accommodate this and keep it under the maximum 8%. So um, there are also some particulars uh, we, you may want to ask me about in terms of the, the calculation of what of the window signage at Healthy Living is a sign and what is not. Um, we generally concur with the applicant's assertion that the um, corporate logo signage, so both the red and green apple uh, facing the north side of the building, facing the south side of the building, as well as the monochrome healthy living apple logo that's in those other windows that face route two would count towards sign area, um, but that the other elements on those windows um, that are just sort of decorative and really arguably carry no commercial message would not be included in the sign area or window coverage limitations as part of the master sign plan. So I will stop there and stop sharing my screen. And we can uh, talk about it. Okay, uh, thank you, Matt. So I wanna be upfront with the applicant that there's uh, a possibility that I'm gonna continue this to the December 8th meeting. And, and the reason for, um, for that possibility is uh, out of respect for you, the applicant, who has, um, who has been a great developer in Williston and done great things at Finney Crossing. And I don't wanna get into a situation where we go into deliberations uh, and we don't approve um, your proposed master sign plan amendment. And uh, because we've closed the hearing, uh, if it would force you to go back to the, um, you know, back to the st start over again, back to the starting line. And I, and I, and I don't want to do that. Um, but I also, um, you know, I also want to be clear that, that there's some things that we're going to be talking about in the deliberative session that may, um, um, that, that, that may want, you know, may, I, I just want to have that flexibility. So, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm tossing that out there in the beginning of this discussion in the spirit of transparency. And, uh, and so with, with that, I will turn it over to the applicant to, uh, add anything that you would like to, to Matt's, uh, staff report. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and, and uh, Pete, I appreciate the uh, upfront discussion and uh, uh, perspective on uh, this application and uh, realize that there are other things at play here just outside of um, our specific application because I realize that, it, that there are comprehensive plans, sort of implications or assigned plan impl implications. Uh, obviously, uh, what you know, I'll, I'll I'm going to actually have Joe speak more about the specific request. I think the one piece is that um, we would like to find a way to come to some resolution um, because we do have some other uh, tenants in. Uh, that we need to figure out their signage plans as well. Um, and so if we could have some direction as to uh, where the DRB is going, I know that's hard, but even not necessarily during the discussion, but even tomorrow or something after deliberations, 
uh, that would be good because we do have another application that's currently pending uh, that's following the current master sign plan approval that was done in July. But um, with related to this specific application, I mean, Joe, do you want to speak a little bit about uh, what has taken place and, and what the specific request is? Sure, sure. So I'm, um, so, so Eli Lesser Goldsmith, the, the president and CEO, CEO, wasn't able to make the, the meeting tonight. So he asked me to um, uh, fill in <laughs> and uh, speak on his behalf. But, um, you know, I, I'd like to maybe just say a few words about kind of how the, <clears throat> how the design of this store, including the, the design of the signs has evolved. Um, and also maybe just say a few words on, um, on how we believe that what's being proposed tonight uh, complies with the, the regulations in the town. Um, you know, I don't know how much Eli has uh, shared with the board in previous meetings, but um, the Williston store is, is actually uh, kind of a brand new uh, concept for a healthy living. Um, it's a it's a much smaller store than their two other stores, the one on Dorset Street in South Burlington and their Saratoga store. And uh, their plan, I don't know if he shared this with you, but their plan is to roll out this concept and grow their brand, uh, not only throughout Vermont, but into other states in, um, uh, in, New, in, in the Northeast. And so this is, this is the very first store of that plan to expand. And um, they, you know, they had to come up with a, a new design for the store that, uh, you know, that not only worked operationally on a smaller scale, but they also wanted to come up with a design concept that really uh, reflected or, you know, and promoted their their image, their brand image of providing high quality, you know, healthy, environmentally friendly foods and, and, and other types of products in their stores. So this whole design process has been a work in progress over the last couple of years since, you know, ever since we first signed a, a lease with, uh, with Scott and Chris. And my understanding is that um, you know, the, the, the recommendation and the decision to, um, you know, from the designers to go forward with this, um, this window sign concept of their, um, of their logo, their Apple logo, uh, came very late in the process. So well, at, and so after the original master plan got approved and, for whatever reason, Eli, it, it never, uh, it, it never um, registered with him that that would be considered a sign, <laughs> and that he really should have, you know, come back and gotten the the master plan approval uh, amended. So, uh, but he he understands that now, and he's very appreciative of of the town staff, um, their willingness to um, to issue the temporary CO and give him an opportunity to to um, uh, come forward and try to amend the, the, the master sign approval and be in compliance with the regulations. So it's, you know, it's, been a, it's been a work in progress. It's, it's a brand new design. Um, you know, not only did, did Healthy Living wanna try and come up with a design that um, uh, you know, worked operationally for them, but again, they wanted to come up with something that really promoted their brand image of, of good quality and healthy foods. And, you know, some of the design elements that came out of that, you see in the building today with, you know, the use of some higher quality you know, materials like the stone around the two entrances, um, you know, the kind of the artistic or more interesting um, uh, swooping um, uh, canopy uh, that you have over both entrances. And then, you know, and then finally an, another recommendation that came from the designers was to add this kind of artistic logo uh, to the, you know, to the large window area 
uh, over both uh, both of the entrances. And um, you know, I mean, we realize that it is their logo, so there's definitely an advertising uh, component uh, to adding that that window sign. Uh, but we we also see it as um, we also see it as a design element that, in our opinion, and we hope you agree, that we believe um, enhances the overall design aesthetic of the building and the project. Um, you know, we think it adds, um, you know, some artistic um, interest and also, you know, kind of an element of fun to that large area of glass that surrounds both of the both of the uh, entrances, uh, which we think you know will be attractive to the community and hopefully invite them into the store uh, more. And then again, we just we just think it it helps to promote the overall goal of promoting their image of you know healthy, high quality, environmentally um, friendly foods and and uh, products. So, so we see it, we see it as more of just a, um, another sign. We see it as really just an enhancement of the overall design of the building and the project. So we, so we would say, you know, so in our opinion, because it meets all of those goals, we would say that it does indeed, you know, promote the town's goals of, um, I'm just going to read them here of, um, you know, of promoting um, market appeal for a development and also promoting long-term community values. Um, you know, we see it as offering, again, from the design perspective, uh, offering uh, positive contributions to the economy of, of the town and also to just enhancing community life. So, um, you know, we believe that it that it that it fits in really well with the with the design of the building, and uh, we we hope you agree. Great, thank you, Joe. Um, it's a beautiful building. It's a beautiful design. It's a great enhancement to Wilston, and kudos to all involved on the project. Um, I think that from, from my perspective, one, one of the things or a couple of points that I would like the DRB to, to, to engage in some dialogue on right now is, um, is, is uh, one, is it, is it realistic with, uh, with unknown tenants coming in to, to uh, strike all of the portable signs? Uh, the sandwich boards, which we we see used frequently in businesses like um, what uh, like healthy living and what would likely be tenants in in the other spaces in this building, and I and I have some concern about uh, how realistic that is, and if the um, the zoning administrator. Uh, Matt is going to end up, um, you know, driving by there every day looking for these, you know, these these portable signs and sandwich boards and um, and and then being the bad guy to remind everyone of the uh, elimination of those uh, in the master sign plan. So that's one concern that I have, and then the other concern that I have that I that I want to have open and transparent dialogue about is um, um, I think I think healthy living is a is a absolutely a feel good um, a feel good business I think that almost I, th I, I, I I don't want to speak for everybody but I think I, I, I would think that it's likely that people would embrace the core values of healthy living and what it promotes in the Williston community, kind of, kind of what Joe was saying. I think that's motherhood and apple pie. I think that's a good thing. But what happens when another business comes in that doesn't have quite the same um, connection to the community, uh, in in uh, but is maybe close, and it's something that it, and they're asking for something similar. 
and we've set this as uh, a precedent. So, um, so I wanna have open discussion and dialogue uh, with this group about those two topics that I just raised and anything else that you might have. Uh, so with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to the DRB for questions, please. So Pete, I, I've got a number of things I'd like to, to add to, to, your, to what you started there. Um, I, I agree with you on, on both points. Um, and I would share concerns on both of those points uh, from my perspective as well. In addition, I would also, well, I see here is we got, we have a couple questions here. One is the appropriateness of that, uh, what I would call an oversized sign that's at the, at the main entrance there. Uh, and whether that's, uh, you know, approvable and, and meets the criteria here. Um, the other thing that I'm looking at is, is how this changes the mix of the proposed uh, signage on the site and whether th that sign is, is more important to have than the ones that we're getting rid of, which I think ties into your uh, sandwich board question, which I also had, um, but also the banner signs. I think in terms of uh, making a positive contribution to Wilson's landscape, uh, community life, et cetera, I think that the, the, uh, the comprehensive design that we've got going for this site is a, is a huge benefit it's something that's been promoted from the beginning. Um, and I think those banner signs are things that, uh, that we all appreciated when they came through. It's something that ties multiple facets of that site together. Um, and personally, I'm gonna, I would miss them if they were removed from the project. So I'm gonna be in a position of trying to decide whether uh, you know, the sign on the door is more important than the signs hanging from the banners. Uh, um, Joe, I think you make a good argument about that sign. Um, I don't disagree with you. I personally, I like that sign. I don't have a problem with it. Um, the one question I would make, Pete, and, and this is also to Matt, I think, is the, the third sign that's being identified here. I know it's a lot smaller, but the, uh, I think you call it the monochromatic sign. I guess I would actually put out there that I, I'm not convinced that that's a sign. Uh, you know, the signs, the, the red and green signs that are there, absolutely. Those are the, the colors of the business. Those are identified, I think, in a lot of places as healthy living. I walked by there the other morning. I had to kind of squint and look before I found it. It's more like where's Waldo than, than a sign, I think. Um, and therefore, I don't think that's really meant to be uh, a kind of an out there, this is healthy living. And, and you know it because this little green apple is, is hidden with all the other similarly scaled and similarly colored um, images in that window. Uh, I, it's probably not a big deal. It's only, I think, 14 square feet, but it might be enough to save a couple banners here. Um, so I guess um, the, the last thing I would say is um, that I appreciate the, the application here. I appreciate you guys coming in and talking to us about this. I, I, uh, I understand how this came about, I believe you. Um, I don't think this board is in a position to be punitive on this, but I want you to understand that the fact that those signs are already in place um, really should have no bearing on our decision here. That, that, you know, that the fact that they're already there doesn't get you any credit. Um, we're gonna need to um, deliberate this as if they weren't here and you were asking for approval uh, in advance. Uh, I guess those are my comments, Pete. Okay. Uh, thank you, John. Um, before I turn it back over to the applicant, I'd like to hear from other DRB members and get their perspective so that the applicant can, can, uh, can, can speak to uh, any and all issues that are raised by DRB members. So with that, uh, other DRB members, do you have any questions, concerns? Um, Dave, Dave Turner here. Um, I can't remember what the previous master sign plan looked like, and I'm just trying to recall if there was any signage in that area at all before. Because it seems like it would have been a logical place to have a sign above the door or in the doorway. Uh, sure. Is there, is there an, or Andy, is there an opportunity to, uh, to, to show us what was previously approved? 
I think you're yeah. muted, Andy. Oh. Uh, yes, if I can get screen sharing, I can put up the uh, the previously approved or the currently approved plan. Great. I don't think I can do that. I don't know if Emily can um, as the main host. I, I can also just describe it too. I mean, it, it, I've got the plan that's available to share, but um, oh, on the south. Looks like, you, have, uh, you have co-host availability now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it up, guys. I've, I've got it here. Great. Thanks, Matt. So I'll try to get the building jail of a so just while he's bringing those up, there was no window signs proposed on the south side. And on the north side where the window sign is currently proposed, the um, there was a sign proposed there and then it got moved and became a wall sign. It got moved away from the entrance to the location that's shown on this currently approved plan. But there was not any uh, window signs proposed on the south side facing Willison Road. Okay. That answers my question. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Mm -hmm. Other DRB members. Just had a, I was just, um, I'm feeling maybe thick tonight or something. It's not quite getting in, um, registering for me. The, the apples, the apple, the large apple facing, you know, facing route two, what in particular is non-conforming about that? Is it the, the fact so that it's it's over 25% of the window area? Is that the, the threshold that's being exceeded? Correct, David. Um, so normally there's a, there's a percentage of window area or window that can be covered by a window sign. Um, signs in Williston are measured by the area of the smallest regular shape that can be drawn around them. So you, you have to draw a 160 square foot rectangle around that apple um, to, to get its size. And you know, it's I, I I don't have the staff report in front of me. Um, what is it, Andy? Eighty percent of that glass area basically contains the sign. Okay. So so I would view that as a sign that is larger than the limits in Table Twenty Five A, and therefore can only be approved under a master sign plan with those special findings that I quoted. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and then just a follow up question, Matt, on um, under the frontage calculation section in, in the notes, um, we've got the calculations that show the, you know, for the, the um, wall signs and window signs, but then under the notes, it says other proposed window signs may also exceed 25%. Um, can you clarify what that note means? Sure. Um, so if you were to, if you were to take that monochrome apple we were talking about facing mm -hmm. Williston Road. Yeah. Um, I think that that probably exceeds it, um, at least of that of that particular window. I, I don't see. believe the multicolor apple that faces the parking lot would exceed that limitation. I see. So you're saying if, if we if we choose to characterize that as a window sign, then that puts it further over the, the 25 percent. Correct. So, okay. um, you know, so so that's just to tor sort of give some structure to the DRB's conversation about, um, you know, approving or conditioning these things is that um, you're you're beyond the limits of the table. You're within the 8% if, you know, certain signs are eliminated and, and rearranged, um, but you would have to make these findings about compliance with the town plan and the intent of the signage chapter um, in order to allow them. Got it. Thank you. And uh, I, I'll just while I'm talking to, to John Hemmelgarn's point about, you know, what's a sign and what isn't, um, there's a judgment call to be made there. I think, I think that's um, certainly for the DRB to figure out. The closest precedent we've had was on the Lot 30 project, the awnings for Panera Bread um, were originally proposed to contain this sort of shaft of wheat logo that's that's part of Panera's logo even though there was no text and 
in that particular case, the finding of the board was to, to leave that logo element off of those and then not count them as signs. Um, but it's it's a question. It's it's you know it's a question for the board to think like is would this be taken by the public as as communicating that this is healthy living or or is it you know in the context of those other decorative elements is it just another decorative element? Um, so you could choose to include that as a sign or not. As long as the long as the decision is clear, um, that's that's my my real interest in trying to administer it. And I just want to make sure I'm clear with respect to the sandwich signs. So uh, the, it is subordinate tenants that uh, would have their businesses in that same building would be denied the ability to have a sandwich sign as a condition of the cure for this modification. Is that true? It would include any tenants in this building because right right now the sandwich boards that are proposed was was I believe five sandwich boards for use at building J. Um, so um, keeping in mind that this is a master sign plan for all of the commercial uses at Finney. So we're talking about um, Hilton Home Two Hotel, Union Bank, um, and Building J with Healthy Living and the other eventual um, tenants wow. there. Okay, thank you. Uh, other DRB members. Okay, I'm going to turn this over to the applicant to uh, to comment on on some of the issues that have been raised. Um, yeah, I would <laughs> would like to make a comment or talk a, a little bit about the, the the sandwich board signs or the, the portable signs. I think that's what they were called in the original application. Um, and I talked to Chris about this earlier uh, today. And you know, I, I don't know if this is an appropriate request to make <laughs> during a you know a review of an application, but I'll, I'll make the request and you can tell me whether or not it's appropriate. But but the um, you know, the, the total amount of sign area that's allowed for the commercial portion of that project is, it was in the staff report, I think it was uh, 1,643 square feet. And the application that we presented tonight has a total sign area of 1,627 uh, square feet. So there's, so there's an extra 16 square feet of sign area that um, you know is still kind of out there to be to be had, and I'm just wondering, is it possible to tweak the application tonight and ask for uh, approval for an additional 16 square feet of sandwich board sign for Building J? And you know maybe that could be two, you know, two sandwich board signs of eight eight square feet each. Or maybe three signs of, um, you know, five square feet each, uh, which could then be divvied up uh, amongst the tenants in the building. But that would um, just be an opportunity for, um, you know, some of those tenants to have a sandwich board in addition to their, you know, their, their wall and window signs, and you know, you know uh, to some extent addresses some of John's comments about. Um, you know, allowing for different types of sign in the process, signs in the project. Uh, uh, I think that's appropriate, Joe, to raise that. Thank you. Uh, Chris or Andy, do you have anything more to add? Uh, I guess just on the, the monochrome apple that we're, that is we're referring to it, um, just for reference, that is 29% uh, of the window area when you look at that uh, singular singular center grouping. Um, and if that was to be considered uh, art as opposed to a sign, there's additional capacity. You know, all, all five of the portable signs could be um, added back into the application if that was either the applicants or the uh, or the board's um, desire 
as Joe mentioned, there's certainly capacity for at least two, possibly three, depending on the exact area. And I would also like to add that um, I agree with, you know, the questions about the sandwich boards. And I, I do think that if there's a way that we can uh, either address it through that, that apple, that smaller apple uh, that Andy just discussed or modifying the application that, you know, uh, since we submitted this, I do think that um, you know, modifying it um, to allow for sandwich boards would be beneficial to the overall project. Question. If you would please comment on uh, what latitude the bylaws provide for, for uh, classifying or categorizing the, the large apple as, as our Were you asking about the large apple being classified as art or the small? You're talking about the monochrome. The monochrome one, right? Uh, oh, okay. That was that was what you were talking about, Joe, is the smaller one? No, I think uh, Chris is the one who mentioned that, right? Oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, Chris, Chris were, you, were, you, were you talking about the smaller apples potentially being art? Yes, the one that's mixed in with the other... Um, fruit and vegetable images and the utensils. Okay. Um, and we had had a similar discussion with Matt before we uh, submitted the application. You know, we talked about the same example at lot 30. Um, and the reason it was presented this way was because it was a logo and on past projects, I've also, I guess my sense was that the DRB might look at this as a logo and consider it uh, a sign, although I could certainly um, could have could have equally made a, a reasonable argument that because it's mixed in with the other elements that it's you know part of a larger art scheme as as John described it it is sort of like a, a where's Waldo if you know it's it's there and are looking for it you can find it but it, it's not something that draws your attention because it is uh, part of a larger um, uh, display in the windows and it doesn't have those uh, corporate logo colors. That's what I was going to ask. Okay, so uh, if everybody could go to their group chat uh, on the on the Zoom, what, which is part of the Zoom a uh, Zoom feature, um, probably Emily put this up, which is twenty five dot eleven dot one. Uh, what is public art? And if you go right to the right to the last sentence while public art can and should help attract people to a place it bears no commercial message explicit or implicit and this certainly this certainly doesn't uh doesn't doesn't pass that last test and, uh, because it's part it's part of their the the healthy living logo and uh and it's it's very um, you know it's very much part of the brand, and so I don't think that we can consider this to be public art. Um, if if anybody disagrees, please weigh in at this point, please. As much as I might like to disagree, Pete, I can't. I, I say that again. I said as much as I might like to disagree, I can't. That that I think it, this is pretty clear that this is a, right. it, it is either explicit or implicit. Um, that's kind of what we've been arguing, but this this includes both of those. So, right. Okay. On, on the other hand, if that if that apple were removed from that window and put in with a, you could actually it could still be an apple. But if it was drawn in a similar fashion with a, a, the same graphics as the other fruits and vegetables and, and other images in that window, and, and wasn't that standard healthy living shape, uh, then I think it, it would it would in no way be uh, perceived as as uh, signage, and it becomes part of the art that is everything else that that window is, in my opinion. And, and, and I agree with that. 
And, and that might be something that Eli is willing to do uh, in order to allow, you know, the five sandwich boards to come back into the application. Um, I don't know that for sure, but I think that'd be a reasonable compromise for him to, to remove it and replace it with some other type of art form. Yeah. While we're on the topic of public art, um, I'm recalling from pre-application, I'm gonna share my screen, um, when this project was going through its concept review, there was the idea of public art, um, some sculptures in front of that Eastern end of the building. So there could be an opportunity um, if the big apple facing Williston Road has to go away to reimagine what type of window decal gets put on that does Oh. We lost you, Emily. Okay, I think we lost Emily on that. I think she'll be back. Yeah. Yeah, I think I can pick up on where she was heading, which is that um, th there there are certainly ways to enliven the glass area on the building that would would be called art and and would not fall into this category as um, you know to be treated as signs. Okay. So where where I'm leaning on this at this point of uh, tonight's hearing is uh, in, in, instead of closing and deliberating and coming up with uh, what, what we think is um, a possible solution or, or flat out rejection, I, I, don't, I don't know, I have one vote, I don't know what the, the group would decide. Um, Instead of instead of taking that risk and uh, and say we do we do approve uh, with conditions, um, I'm uncomfortable going in that direction because um, I think I think this should be a collaborative process. Um, the uh, the applicant has has been um, has 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 been collaborative in the past, uh, and we want to maintain that relationship. And, uh, and we really want to have something that, uh, that, that works for all parties and, and is fair when how we would treat future applications. And so with that, where I'm, where I'm, what I'm going to do is, uh, is I'm going to continue this until December 8th, which is only two weeks away. And, 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 and then uh, and the board will, uh, in, in our deliberative session, will We'll, um, we'll have a robust conversation about this and discussion and debate and share perspectives. And we'll, we'll be providing staff with feedback. Uh, and I would ask that the applicant and staff uh, then work, work together to, uh, uh, to, to, to execute and update a plan uh, that that meets the what comes out of the DRB. Now, is that going to be enough room, enough time, with uh, uh, to to have those conversations, uh, resubmit, and meet the timetable um, for the December eighth meeting? That's a question for for Matt and Emily. We we need to be able to give the applicant pretty clear um, information. You know, the end of this week about what how the DRB is feeling about what they would approve. Um, we would need it early next week in order to, to look at it and distribute it back to you. Um, so it's a, it's a tight turnaround. We're not talking about wholesale change to the entire plan necessarily. It's, it's really a numbers calculation and maybe a revised elevation. So I'd leave it to the applicant. Um, We've got a short week here um, and not a lot of time next week is is there time to respond to something if, if we can get back to the applicant tomorrow. 
Uh, I'm going to step in and speak up for Andy, uh, who's doing most of the work. Uh, <laughs> it, it's say yes, we can uh, we can definitely uh, meet the timetable. Um, I, as as Matt said, I don't think it's super heavy lifting. We would like some specific uh, direction or input um, from the DRB. I think coming from this as well, we're, we also have some clear paths that you know uh, we think we will probably want to to pursue as well. Um, and so I think combined we can be uh, uh, creating. A program that is accessible to um, uh, that, that that we can get approved uh, and be following the rules. Uh, because Pete, I appreciate your your perspectives, and I've seen uh, most of you um, on the board over the last uh, I shouldn't say this, but 20 years uh, reviewing and getting you know projects approved at Pitting Crossing and we have uh, come out with what I think is uh, an extremely successful neighborhood uh, and we wanna maintain that. Um, and I think without your input and your perspectives, uh, we will would not have been as successful. So uh, so I, I do believe it's been collaborative and, and helpful and we always take your feedback uh, 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 as, as constructive as we can. Well, thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you for those kind words. And uh, as best I can tell, uh, staff weigh in, but I, but I think that December 8th is the last meeting of the year. I don't think there is anything scheduled for December 22. Is that true? That's, that's correct, Pete. Okay. So, uh, so that, that adds to the urgency here, because I want to, I want to keep this moving and uh, I don't want to put undue, um, you know, un undo stress on on Andy who's doing the heavy lifting, but I, I believe I believe what we're asking here is is manageable, and uh, and I think a better solution will come from from continuing this. Um, so uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to continue this uh, uh, until December eighth. Uh, so DP zero nine dash zero one dot twenty uh, is going to be continued to December. 8th and uh and we will uh in deliberations we will be pro providing staff with um with with pretty clear uh direction as to wh what direction we would like this to go and then and then it will be a team effort to uh to amend the uh master sign plan amendment Pete, am i uh, can i still ask additional questions this evening before we stop uh yeah yeah yes Please do, John. So uh, again, I had mentioned the banner signs at one point. We have not discussed those in the least here this evening. Um, could someone put a plan up there that show me which six are, are being uh, eliminated? Or even a summary of where the, was it? I think there were 15 or 20 of them at some point and you're they're down to the six less. Um, don't recall if we have a diagram of that, Andy. No. So the the not the reason that the banner signs came about, but uh, the banner signs were proposed for both the Union Bank and the hotel uh, buildings when there was excess uh, allowable sign area that was not being used. And uh, again, jump in if I'm misstating anything, Matt, but because the master sign plan applies to all of Finney Crossing commercial, those um, banner signs could be placed anywhere within the commercial area subject to the town's approval if they were going to be within a, a public street right of way. Um, and so we had eliminated uh, a few with the uh, bank proposal and uh, there are now just had it in my notes here. Uh, still 23 remaining um, as a result of the unused sign area associated with, associated with the hotel building. So those 23 could be located uh, anywhere on the site. They could be along Holland Lane, they could be in parking lots, um, they could be along Market Street or any combination, but um, 
the, the plan that you have in front of you still has 23 uh, light pole banners that would remain that could be adjusted depending upon uh, the, the feedback and direction that you give staff uh, to provide to us as guidance. Okay, so um, at the risk of making this to sound more like a pre-app than, uh, than, than what, what we have going here, uh, you know, Chris, is there a plan for, or for uh, a presentation to this board of what those banners are going to look like and where exactly they're gonna be? Uh, we haven't probably, no. I, I, Thank I you for say, that. Yeah. Right answer. No, we don't. <laughs> we don't have a plan yet. <laughs> okay, I think I think though that with with three buildings now in place, yes, um, and another one uh, at least through pre-app and a bunch of other rectangles on the plan, I think that uh, it, it's uh, the, the next time we see you, I can imagine asking for some of that information. That's fair, and we certainly can be prepared uh, to present that as. as is I think you're right. We're filling in the property, which is great news. Um, and we want to continue to do that. But we also want to highlight some of those things that we have out there as as special features. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and again, I, I do like the idea of the banners. Um, and so I'm going to, I will go kicking and screaming if they start disappearing at, okay. a, at, a, at a quick play, uh, pace. Got it. I, I'm not sure if we have 23 light poles in the neighborhood. Well, I, I was having a hard time counting on the plan and trying to figure out where those were. So th this actually makes sense. So I think it's time to, it, 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 we're, we're getting closer and closer to really kind of uh, perfecting that uh, that design concept. Yeah. Yeah, John, really briefly, um, you know, in the Finney Crossing design, there's a lot of light poles in parking lots. There are some light poles along the street. Um, but town policy for the public street, like Holland Lane, um, is to really um, just place light poles at intersections. So, you know, that, that sort of promenade as you come into Holland Lane actually is, is not lined with street lights um, because that's just not the way Williston does um, lighting mm -hmm. on its public streets. And I believe, Chris, the residential side, Zephyr Road, there, there was sort of particular dispensation worked out for the amount of, of lighting uh, along that street that's in excess of what the town would normally do. Yeah, we had to work with Bruce uh, prior to the construction of Zephyr Road about this street uh, lighting along Zephyr. Um, and, uh, and I can't remember how it ended up happening exactly the way it, it, it got installed, but we did, um, we worked through that, I know, a number of years ago. Okay, I'm good, Pete. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, other members of the DRB, any additional comments? I'm good. Okay, um, I don't believe that this applies, but I'll ask it anyway. Are there any members of the public that are out there uh, that have any questions? No chats and no raised hands. Okay, thank you, Emily. Uh, okay, uh, well, well, thank you. We're going to continue this to December eighth, um, and please, uh, please call staff uh, tomorrow morning to find out more about uh, about direction provided from the DRB. And we look forward to uh, reengaging on on December eighth. Thank you very much and uh, have a great Thanksgiving uh, to everybody out there. You too. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. You as well. Uh, thanks, Andy. Thanks, Joe. Uh, okay. Uh, so that uh, concludes the public portion of tonight. We're going to, uh, we're going to go into deliberations at this point. Uh, it's eight 35. Okay. Uh, welcome back to the Town of Williston Development Review Board on Tuesday, November 24th, 2020. The DRB is back out of the deliberative session. That's 842. And uh, we are going to make motions on the first three items of a four item agenda. Uh, we are, after the, the motions are made for the first three, we are gonna go back into deliberations.
Uh, but let's tackle um, agenda item number one first. Is there a motion for HP 21-01 slash AP 21-0122, the Williston Federated Church? Yes, Pete. Uh, as authorized by WDB 6.6.3, I, John Hemmelgarn, move that the Williston Development Review Board, having reviewed the application submitted and all accompanying materials, including the recommendations of the town staff and the advisory boards required to comment on this application by the Williston Development Bylaw, and having heard and duly considered the testimony presented at the public meeting of November 24th, 2020, accept the recommendations and approve HP 21-02. This approval authorizes the applicant to seek an administrative permit for the proposed development, which must proceed in strict conformance with the plans on which this approval is based. Thank you, John. Is there a second? I'll second it. Uh, Scott seconds it. Any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, uh, individual roll call, uh, yay or nay. Uh, Paul Christensen? Yay. John Hamilton. Yes. Steve Lambrecht? Yay. Scott Riley? Yes. David Saladino? Yay. David Turner? Yay. Uh, the chair is a yay as well. Um, seven in favor, none opposed. Motion carries. Uh, is there a motion for DP 21-06 Adams Rio Property LLC? Uh, yes, uh, I'll make a motion. Uh, as authorized by 6.6.3, I, Scott Riley, move that the Williston Development Review Board, having reviewed the application submitted and all accompanying materials, including the recommendations of the town staff and the advisory boards required to comment on this application by the Williston Development Bylaw, and having heard and duly considered the testimony, presented at the public hearing of November 24, 2020, accept the findings of fact and conclusions of law for DP 21-06 and approve this discretionary permit subject to the conditions of approval above. This approval authorizes the applicant to file final plans, obtain approvals of these plans from staff, and then seek administrative and administrative permit for the proposed development, which must proceed in strict conformance with the plans on which this approval is based. Thank you, Scott. Is there a second? I'll second it. Dave Turner seconds it. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, indicate uh, yay or nay, please. Uh, Paul Christensen. John Hamilton. Yes. Steve Lambert. Yay. Scott Riley. Saladino. David yay. Turner. Uh, the chair is a yay. Um, seven in favor, not opposed. Motion carries. Uh, is there a motion for DP 21-07 uh, for a boundary line adjustment for Whitney Fellows? Yes, as authorized by WDB 6.6.3. I, Steve Lambrick, move that the Williston Developmental Review Board, having reviewed the application submitted and all accompanying materials, including the recommendations of the town staff and the advisory boards required to comment on this application by the Williston Development Bylaw, and having heard and duly considered the testimony presented at the public hearing of November 24, 2020, accept the findings of fact and conclusions of law for DP 21-07 and approve this discretionary permit subject to the conditions of approval above. This approval authorizes the applicant to file final plans, obtain approval of these plans from staff, and then seek an administrative permit for the proposed development, which must proceed in strict conformance with the plans on which this approval is based. Thank you, uh, Steve. Is there a second? I'll second. Second. Uh, I think Dave Turner got in there just uh, just to add a John, so Dave Turner. Thanks. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, Paul Christensen, yay or nay? Yay. John Hemmelgarn? Yes. Steve? 
Yay. Scott Riley? Yes. Dave Saladino? Yay. Dave Turner? Yay. Uh, the chair is a yay. Uh, seven in favor, none opposed. Uh, motion carries. Uh, let's do, while well, Mr. Riley is here, let's do the minutes for uh, November 10th. 2020. Uh, is there a uh, actually? Uh, you, you know what? We can. Uh, we're 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 going to be able to close close this meeting because um, we're not going to come out in a in a public way and do uh, and and do uh, any type of uh, public. Uh, uh, public disclosure from our deliberation. We're not going to vote on the next uh, on the next application, and so uh, so we can close the public portion of this meeting after we approve the minutes, and uh, and then the DRB can just go into deliberative session for providing feedback on the healthy living application. Uh, so with that, uh, is there a uh, or, or, or is that not the case, Matt? Do, uh, do I have to close the meeting officially uh, in a public way uh, after we have a discussion on healthy living? How does that? No, you, you, you can close the the public meeting, uh, concluding your public business, and just um, you know beyond that, DRBs are allowed to have deliberative sessions whenever. So you're you're just going to say you're going to have a deliberative session afterwards. You're not returning to the public meeting tonight. Great, great. Just wanted to make sure I was compliant there. Um, okay, so is there a motion uh, to approve the minutes of November 10th, 2020? I so move. Thank you, Steve. Is there a second? Second. second. Uh, Dave Saladino seconds it. Is there any discussion? Uh, I just, I have one nit, and that is on the attendees. Uh, that's Court, Courtney uh, Booten. That's B O U T I N. That's that's my only comment. Is there any other comments? Uh, okay. Um, Paul Christensen, do you approve the minutes? Yes. John Hemmelgard? Yes. Steve Lamprecht? Yay. Scott Riley? Yes. Dave Saladino? Yes. Dave Turner? Yay. Uh, and the chair does as well with that one amendment. Uh, seven in favor, none opposed. Uh, the minutes are approved. Uh, is there any other business to be brought forward to this board tonight? Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? I'll second. Okay, Scott, thank you. Uh, we'll do this as a group. Uh, as a group, uh, all in favor of adjournment, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh